Hey everyone, it's me, Michael Goosebumps fan. I hope you're doing well. Uh, when you're watching this video, you might not really understand why I might have a different, even though this isn't very common, I might have a different haircut than what my return to YouTube video looks like. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> so I'm recording this in January. I'm not planning on coming back till February, so it's going to be a little while till you see this video. But um, when I watch anything and want to talk about it, for a things like Goosebumps video, I'm going to go ahead and record it in the meantime, and I'll upload it when I come back, and of course you're seeing it as of now, so I'm already back. Uh, but anyway, God willing, that's how everything goes the next couple of months. Hopefully nothing happens to me, uh, but we'll see. <laughs> anyway, uh, today on the Things Like Goosebumps segment of my channel, I don't make a whole lot of this particular segment on my channel anymore, mainly because it seems like people don't really care that much about it. But I'm kind of getting to the point where I realized that was one of the big things that helped me keep motivating before I needed a break all the time because I was constantly being flooded with Goosebumps books this year. Instead of reading kind of things like Goosebumps stuff or watching some things like Goosebumps stuff, having things to kind of recommend to you guys and talk about that maybe you'd have some interest in. Uh, so maybe you guys will care about this. One of the last things like Goosebumps videos I did before I went on break in uh, December or early January, whatever, was a film called Return of Dracula, and it was fantastic. I loved that flick. Uh, I'm a big fan of black and white horror films, and it's mainly a newer thing with me. It's only something I've been into for the last maybe roughly 10 years. I've only been into movies that are in black and white or older films from like the 40s, 50s, whatever, since like 2012 or 13 when I took film studies in high school uh, before I graduated. I love old movies. I'm getting to the point that I think black and white horror films are some of the best horror films ever made. I really genuinely feel that way. I know it's not going to be for everybody. Not everybody's going to agree with me on that. It seems to me there's a lot of repetition both in old black and white horror, classic horror, whatever you want to call it, days, as well as a lot of repetition now. The problem is that there's less creativity now. You had a lower budget style back then. You had to have practical effects if you were going to do anything like that or some kind of film trickery with the uh, footage film itself, you had to do certain things to, to, to be creative, is what I'm trying to say, to make a, a movie. So even the worst of the worst will sometimes be better or more charmingly bad than what we get now, when it's just a bad, dull, empty-headed, soulless cash grab of a movie, like uh, The Boy, or The Boy 2, you know, or, or The Woman in Black, the relatively recent Hammer horror film, which just did not do it for me. <laughs> Anyway, uh, of course, things like Goosebumps is not exclusive to just old horror films. If there's anything newer that seems like it's kind of something a family could enjoy or kids could enjoy, I try to keep that on the, on the, you know, something to talk about here on the channel. Just because I think people would like some ideas of stuff they can watch in case they don't want to read books or something. Be able to bring in more people to the channel that could get into Goosebumps. You know, whatever. But uh, this particular video, of course, as the title said a long time ago before I started rambling forever, is about... The 1956 film, The Black Sleep. I did not know what this was. I went on Amazon Prime. My wife and I have Amazon Prime and Hulu. That's all of our streaming services. And uh, we, <laughs> we have Prime. And Prime is very good about having a lot of the kind of stuff I like. I don't mind watching low-budget horror, but I noticed they have a section on there, kind of hidden away, that you could type up called Classic Horror. And you'll get a lot of black and white horror films or like... 50s or 60s when they didn't really have cursing and foul language and nudity and stuff in movies so much in the mainstream. I think the Hayes Code was still a thing until like the 70s. I'm not really sure how that works, but even though even so, the Hayes Code kind of kept out gore out of movies. It kept out nudity, foul language. Not that that stuff bothers me tremendously, but when there's an ex when there's an excess of it, that's when I get bothered by those things. Um, as a Christian, I feel more convicted to stay away from those things. So I try to here lately. I'm trying to serve God more and, and draw myself away from a lot of more things that God would say are evil, right? So I'm coming more towards black and white stuff, old comedy and stuff, that are they're typically less raunchy, almost in any fashion. Uh, even black and white horror films, a lot of the characters and whatnot can be, like I said, kind of repetitive, kind of not as developed as they could be, but then there's films like Return of Dracula that just everything about it was fantastic. The performances, the characters, all that stuff was so good. Um, the Black Sleep is very solid. I really, really dug this flick. Um, I think too many people accuse old black and white classic horror films of all kinds of junk that really isn't true. Um, they can't watch it with the lens of that time. And we all know from Goosebumps alone, if you're a Goosebumps fan and you've even looked at titles of Goosebumps books in the 90s, especially in the classic series, 
you know how common it is to see classic horror references done in Goosebumps. For example, the blob that hit everyone. There is a movie from, I think it was 58, 56, somewhere in there, called The Blob, starring Steve McQueen. They, of course, remade that in the 80s with Frank Darabont writing the screenplay with somebody else, I think, or just by himself, something like that. You know, the guy who did The Green Mile and The Shawshank Redemption. And it was amazing and terrifying. <laughs> I kind of want to talk about both of the Blob films at some point on this channel, but I don't know. But uh, we'll get there one day. So The Black Sleep is a very good movie. A very good movie. It, it, I just, I really enjoyed this a lot. Um, I've never heard of this. Never heard of it talked about. I feel like I've heard the title mentioned in passing. I, I didn't know anything about it. Nobody's like recommended it to me, which is usually why I watch movies. Um, so 1956, like I said, black and white horror film. Really cool concept. If you're a Goosebumps fan, I think you'll like this a lot. I think you'll like the next film I'm going to talk about after this video uh, much more than probably this one. But I'm kind of on a ball with watching these black and white horror films. I want to get more and more into 50s, 60s horror mixed with classical stuff like Nosferatu and whatnot. Do more videos like that on the channel. Not consecutively always, but, you know, around October, take a break from reading so much. Do some more of this kind of thing. I don't know. <laughs> but, uh... So essentially, after almost like 10 minutes of rambling, I'm sorry, it's been a while since I've made a video, it's been like two weeks since I've made a video in this current time in January, um, before you get to see me come back and stuff. But anyway, so, there's a guy named Gordon Ramsay, <laughs> yeah, Gordon Ramsay, like the chef, I think it's even spelt the same way from what I looked at it, because I'm a huge Gordon Ramsay fan, I watch Hell's Kitchen all the time, I love Hell's Kitchen, I love Kitchen Nightmares, I love all that stuff fantastic entertainment. You can't watch it censored. You have to watch the uncensored one. It's excess with the foul language, so it's not going to be for everybody. But, oh man, it's so fun. Uh, <laughs> I'm not even a reality TV person. I love both of those shows so much. Uh, I like Mean Ramsey. I don't like Nice Ramsey as much. They're, they're both whatever, but I like Mean Ramsey. He's fun to watch people cry. I love it when they cry. Uh, anyway, so <laughs> Gordon Ramsey, Dr. Gordon Ramsey in this case, who is a doctor, has been accused of committing a murder of a man that was so fat that there's no way that this man was able to lift this guy and carry his body and move it and stuff. There's just no way. And he doesn't understand how he even got convicted for this crime. It was kind of just circumstantial evidence. And so he's on death row. He's going to be put to death the next morning, executed. I'm not really sure what execution they were going to do. I don't remember if they were going to, like, hang him. I think they were going to hang him. Yeah, because they, they made mention about the scars around his neck, but... Uh, he, I think he was going to get hung, or hanged, whatever. He has a friend who was an old kind of mentor of him that comes in, uh, played by uh, Basil Rathbone. This particular man's name is Joel. And Joel is a doctor as well. Like I said, he was kind of the mentor to Gordon Ramsay, the doctor, not the chef. And he has this meeting with him, he tells him, like, look, I'm going to put this powder from inside of my little cane, like there's a little metal piece on top of his cane, he lifts that up, he drops this powder into this man's drink, he says, like, you know, drink this, I think it's like tomorrow morning, or something. Basically, this is some kind of, some kind of, like, East Indian type thing, some kind of powder stuff that will put you into almost like death-like coma, and you have to have the antidote put into you within 12 hours of taking this or having drank this or whatever, or you'll die. So, yeah, the clock kind of starts up. They go to execute that man, Gordon Ramsay, the next morning. He's already drank that liquid. He seems dead. So they just kind of let him go. They're like, whatever. And people are mad outside because they didn't get to see an execution. People are kind of bloodthirsty about that. There's a little bit of a commentary about that in the film. But this man wakes up not too long after that <clears throat> with Gordon Ramsay, or not with Gordon Ramsay, uh, with Joel and another fellow who helps him out named Odo, o Udu, Odo, e it's like z zero, listen to me, it's O-D-O, -O. I think it's Odo, anyway, they, they've given the antidote, they brought him back to life, now the doctor, well Joel, Dr. Joel, tells Dr. Gordon that he essentially wants him to help him with, a mix, with some experiments, now Dr. Joel is essentially a brain surgeon of some sort. There's something he's tinkering around with, and he wants Gordon Ramsay to help him out with this at his own, like, castle that he lives in. This is one thing I love about black and white horror films. I love the castles, the gothicness feel of these movies. I love that kind of stuff. It's just so fascinating. I love the music. I love the atmosphere to these kinds of movies. I wish I had grown up more on black and white horror films than I did 80s and 90s horror, as much as I love that stuff, too. I grew up on slashers. I grew up on things like that, thrillers, that kind of thing. 
more slasher than anything. I wish I had grown up on more stuff like this, like Haunting of Hill House and stuff like that. It just really gets to you, really gets under your skin. Um, this movie is not, like, extremely scary. It's kind of... If you have younger kids and you want to get them into horror, they're not really into reading, so you don't want to get them into goosebumps yet, you could start them somewhere like this, and they would have a pretty good time, I think. Again, no nudity, no blood. There is one scene involving a brain surgery that's... I'm not going to lie to you, I was a little in shock <laughs> about seeing what I saw. Uh, the brain surgery scene is not extremely grotesque, but it's enough to like make you squirm. I'm not going to lie to you. Uh, the experiments and the idea of discussing the brain and what can you do with the brain to try to, you know, do their experiments. It's interesting stuff. It's very interesting in my opinion. It's very basic science. It's very interesting science. Um, talking about if, it, if they poke a certain area, you know, your eyes will open, look around the room. If you poke a certain area, your arm will lift up, that kind of thing. It's that kind of interesting stuff you've seen in movies before, but this is much earlier on. So that's probably the interesting part, I think, in a lot of ways. Uh, the cast is fantastic. Everybody in this movie, their characters not be, might not be the most developed, but everybody's good in here. Gordon Ramsay being the most relatable, I think. Uh, Basil Rathbone, of course, who has played like Sherlock Holmes in the past. He's played a bunch of different characters in the past that are very well known. Uh, Basil Rathbone is a phenomenal actor. He's kind of the kind of suspicious, like he's probably the villain type in this movie. He's fantastic here. Bela Lugosi has a non-speaking part, but he's like the butler of the house who's like a mute. He's fantastic for what he's doing. He's eerie. He's so old. And sadly enough, this is the last movie he ever made. And it's really kind of sad to me. It's the first. It's the last one we ever completed, is what I read. Um, man, it's so sad. I love Bela Lugosi. He was Dracula. He was the Dracula. He's my Dracula. He's always going to be my favorite Dracula. Um, Lon Chaney Jr. is also in the film, too, as a guy. I can't remember his name. Uh, I've got it here on IMDb. Mungo. Um, he is, like, a mute as well, but he keeps trying to kill this one girl that's like a nurse inside of... Not really a nurse, but kind of a nurse, kind of a house cleaner lady who works for Basil Rathbone, Dr. Joel, uh, works in the castle itself. For some reason, he keeps trying to assassinate her, like, just grab her and strangle her to death. And there's only one other lady who's, like, the head nurse, head house cleaner lady who's closer with Dr. Joel. Not, like, in a romantic way, but she just kind of is closer with Dr. Joel than that younger lady is. Uh, who is the only person who Mungo will listen to when he tells her to stop, or when she tells him to stop trying to hurt people or strangle people or whatever. And, like, you could just be alone in the middle of the night, and Mungo, this big, brawling, buff dude, will come out of nowhere and start trying to strangle you. It's kind of intense when moments like that happen in this movie. Um, you might just be taking a bathroom break in the middle of the night, and you're probably going to get killed by Mungo. It's really well done. It's not like my favorite black and white horror film ever. That would be held for the likes of Frankenstein and, you know, the Wolfman and Invisible Man, and it would be held up to the likes of things like that, Not a Living Dead. Not this, but this is good. This is really solid. If you want something fun to watch as like a family, if you like horror as a family, if you're trying to get your younger kids into horror and something that might kind of creep them out a little bit, won't scare them as much as some things within, from within Goosebumps, like Ghost Camp, <laughs> you know? This was fun. I like it a lot. I really recommend it if you haven't seen it before. Again, if you're a Goosebumps fan, try out some of the stuff I'm recommending to you if you like old black and white horror films. But even if you don't, don't start here. This is not the place to start with black and white horror films. You're not going to really get the essence of it. Start at something like Frankenstein or The Wolfman. Start at somewhere in those ballparks that really have that tone that Goosebumps can try to grab sometimes. When they go more horror route, not so much comedic route. Uh, Goosebumps has two different ways it goes. Comedic horror. Funny, scary. Sometimes they can blend the two, but usually it's one or the other. And, uh, yeah. This film was fun. It's really eerie at times. Again, the atmosphere is very good. Everybody brings a really solid performance here. Basil Rathbone is fantastic here. Again, Bela Lugosi, it's sad to see him not much in after this. Because <laughs> it was the last completed film. But he's good. Lon Chaney Jr. is good. Being Mungo, just kind of this panicked isolated guy. We don't really know what's wrong with him. Um, it's great. There's some really cool stuff in here. The finale is really crazy. Like I said, there's kind of kind of some body horror stuff in here that really got to me. If you like that kind of stuff, it's going to be for you. I hear people all the time recommend, bo recommend books to me here on YouTube for my Goosebumps channel of like, I live in your basement and different books like that within Goosebumps. Because there is some books in Goosebumps that have some body horror things to them. Uh, Wanted the Haunted Mask is one of the best examples of that. The Haunted Mask is one of the best examples of that. 
there are some Goosebumps books that have kind of the body horror feel to them. If you prefer that, if you like that kind of thing, watch this flick. <laughs> There's some pretty horrific stuff in here. Uh, anyway, when it comes to The Black Sleep, it's not an amazing flick or anything, but it's pretty good. It's a pretty solid flick if you like this kind of thing. If you like my recommendations for stuff that's kind of like Goosebumps, you might like this. Anyway, it's pretty short, too. It's it's kind of one of the longer black and white horror films I've seen. It's an hour and 22 minutes. Usually these don't even make it to 90 minutes. They might be like an hour to an hour and 10. So, yeah. It's not really long. It's a shorter film uh, in modern day context. But anyway, what are your thoughts on The Black Sleep? Have you seen this? Do you love it? Do you hate it? Put your thoughts and comments down below. I would love to hear what you have to say about this flick. If I had to rate The Black Sleep on a five-star basis, uh, as much as I really enjoy it, it's not like amazing. I'd give it like a three out of five stars. It had some really great, amazing stuff in it. It's just not an amazing movie. It's not perfect or anything like that. It's not something like the original Frankenstein with Boris Karloff. Not the original. There is a there is a small Thomas Edison Frankenstein film that came out before the Boris Karloff film. But the Boris Karloff Frankenstein film, the first one he ever made, is probably my favorite black and white horror film of all time. Probably one of my top, if not my very favorite horror film of all time. Uh, it's amazing. Absolutely amazing. Uh, this is not up to par with something like that. That's a masterpiece. This is kind of a little faulty, has its issues, but it's good. Really good. Uh, anyway, 3 out of 5 stars for me. Kind of a high 3 out of 5 stars more than anything. It's kind of borderline 4, but I'm going to stick with a 3. Uh, what are your thoughts if you've seen it? Have you taken my recommendation after you've seen this video and everything? Have you taken my recommendation or will you take my recommendation to check it out and watch it? Again, it's free to watch if you have Prime Video, which is not technically free, but you get my gist. Uh, it's kind of a cool library. I have a lot of black and white stuff that's free to watch on there. Anyway, what are your thoughts? Put them down below. Thank you for watching, guys. Uh, again, now that I'm back, by the time you see this video and whatnot, I've already come back. Thank you for being here. Thank you for all the celebration of what you guys do with the community and how awesome you guys are. Thank you for all the support and love. God bless you guys. Um, yeah. May the Lord Jesus Christ bless you guys today. Goodbye.